Welcome to Compliance Extra. I'm Sue Burt. In this segment, we're joined by John Sellies, a Senior Compliance Consulting Analyst with Walters Kluwer Financial Services. John, on December 11, 2013, the Federal Financial Institutions Examination Council, or FFIEC, published its final guidance on social media and consumer compliance risk management. What can you tell us about the notice? Hi, Sue. The Federal Financial Institutions Examinations Council, or FFIEC, issued a final guidance entitled Social Media, Consumer Compliance Risk and Guidance in December of 2013. The guidance doesn't spell out a new rule, but it does define social media, explain the expectations for a social media risk management plan, and identify areas of risk that financial institutions should be managing. The FFIEC defines social media as interactive online communication where users can generate and share content through text, images, audio, and video. They noted while Facebook and Twitter were social media, direct email and text messages alone were not. They left the door open to include other types of social media as it evolves. You mentioned expectations for a risk management program. So what can you tell us about that? In response to industry feedback, the FFIEC decided against making a one-size-fits-all recommendation and instead set forth expectations that a more well-defined social media policy is needed for institutions that are more actively engaged in social media to attract and acquire new customers. Though, a financial institution with little or no social media presence should still consider the potential for negative comments or complaints that may arise within social media platforms. Think about a bad Yelp review or someone taking to Twitter to bash your institution. How would your institution handle that? In any event, the FFIEC is looking for a risk management program to incorporate the resources from the entire organization, compliance, technology, information security, legal, human resources, and marketing when crafting your program. Mainly, the program should contain or consider the following. A clear governance structure showing the strategic value of social media to the organization that establishes controls and ongoing assessment of risk. Policies and procedures regarding the use and monitoring of social media. A risk management process for third-party relationships who might manage some aspects of your social media presence. Employee training an oversight process for monitoring, audit and compliance functions, parameters for feedback to the institution's board of directors or senior management. John, you also mentioned three areas of risk that institutions should be managing against. What more can you tell us about these areas? Specifically, the guidance outlines three areas of risk, compliance risk, reputation risk, and operational risk. Of the three, compliance risk looms largest. The most important thing to understand is that if you're using social media to advertise to customers, you have to follow all the regulations and disclosures that you have to otherwise follow in a non-social media environment, plus any additional requirements for social media. For a lending institution, this includes Fair Lending, TILA, RESPA, the FDCPA, UDAP, FDIC, or NCUA. They all have regulations that can impact social media, and there are more out there too. I did some digging around on Facebook of some of the larger banking institutions and found that of those with an intentional presence on Facebook, they were intentional not to advertise or to make offers in ways that would trigger some of the required disclosures or statements that would be included in, say, a mailed advertisement. Second, reputational risk has to do with the risks associated with being a participant in social media. First and foremost, you need to protect your brand in the marketplace. That is much easier when you're publishing print or broadcasting advertising pieces because you can control the whole message. In social media, you're inviting a conversation with the public and you can't control as tightly what that message will be. A good example of this is on Twitter. A bank may use Twitter to push out advertisements, but anyone who uses Twitter may respond to that message with their own and you risk the response becoming bigger than your original message. Or maybe it becomes a place where people complain about your organization. Also, there are issues where financial institutions look to third parties to manage their social media presence, much like you'd hire a marketing firm or an advertising agency to help you. Due diligence is required in such a highly regulated industry. You need to follow your risk management program to make sure that you're properly vetting and managing your third party provider. Another important reputational risk area are privacy issues. Ensure that you're not putting customer information in a vulnerable place, such as on social media website, 
that might not conform to the privacy requirements that are included in the laws and regulations. Lastly, an institution must consider the impact of an employee's use of a social media in an official and unofficial capacity and its potential effect on the institution. There are employment law considerations that must also be taken into account when developing a policy on employee use of social media. The third and final area is operational risk. Institutions should be proactive regarding controls on IT and social media to protect its systems and customer information from malicious attacks, either by software, account takeover, or data breach, and have a sufficient incident response protocol in case of an event where a system or customer information is impacted. This risk is broader than just social media, but certainly social media should be considered in the IT security discussion. Very good information, John. Thank you for the update on this important topic. Risk management practices have come under increasing scrutiny. Even with widespread understanding of the overall importance of strategic risk management and recognition of higher standards on the part of regulators and stakeholders, many organizations continue to experience roadblocks. To learn more on how Walters Kluwer Financial Services consultants can help you address your risk management needs, click on the link below your screen.